Alrighty, friends, welcome back to History with Tim's reaction to Sabaton today. You all know I love my Sabaton. Uh, they're probably one of my favorite bands. I listen to them actually all the time driving to work. So, um, I was thinking, you know, I usually do, like, their World War One or their uh, Great Northern War, th those songs. I very rarely have done their World War Two. Like, I did Uprising... But that was very, you know, that, that was a story of heroism. That was a story of fighting. And you know what? Today's video is also a song about heroism. But at the same time, this is definitely one of the more controversial of Sabaton's songs. It's their song Heart of Iron, Hearts of Iron. Now, for those of you who are gamers, you know Hearts of Iron as a World War II strategy game in which you could be the British, Germans, Russians, Americans, anyone. And it's a... It's a it's a strategy game, and you fight over Europe and who wins. But Paradox actually approached Sabaton and asked if they would be able to write a song for the game. And Sabaton, of course, obliged. But this song isn't exactly the story of the game. This is actually the story of something else. And I'm actually going to read you quickly from uh, their discography what the song is about. Hearts of Iron... During the final battle of Berlin in 1945, the general of the 12th Army, Walter Wenck, realized the end of the war was coming. And instead of trying to defeat the advancing Soviet forces, as his orders were, he used his army to create an escape corridor out of Berlin. For such an act, he would surely have been sentenced to death. But instead, he ended up being responsible for up to 250,000 people safely escaping the burning city of Berlin. For some, this was a battle. For him, this was a rescue operation. Now, I say this is controversial because unlike our other songs and our other World War II song, Uprising, where the Germans were so clearly the villains, this is a song where the Germans are actually, at least the 12th Army, are doing something very noble. They are done with the war. They don't want to fight anymore. They know what it is, but they also don't want the people of Berlin, Germany, German people, to suffer anymore. So they make this corridor in order to try to save them from the advancing Soviets. Because the reality was the Soviets were not going to be as gentle as the Americans, British, or French. So, today we're going to be doing a reaction to Hearts of Iron. Alright friends, so here we go. So again, the song is about Walter Wenck and the 12th Army's attempt not to relieve Berlin, but to rescue as many Berliners as possible. Now, there will be a lot of... And I will say this is a warning. There will be a lot of uh, imagery from the Third Reich in this video. This is about the fall of Berlin in 1945 in which the Nazi party was still in power. I mean, the first second of this video, there will be a swastika on the screen. Just, hands down, we, everyone here at History with Tim frown, are against that. We, this is for the song and this is history. So that's why it's being discussed, much like any other controversial subject. But this is Hearts of Iron. Here we go. So, this is actually using clips from a very, very good war movie. Um, this is probably actually, I would say, in my top five favorite World War II movies ever. It's called Downfall. Uh, it's about the last, I believe, two weeks in the bunker with Adolf Hitler. Uh, Bruno Ganz, may you rest in peace, did a phenomenal job playing Adolf Hitler. He actually, what he did was he found private recordings of Hitler. This is the famous meme of the guy, of Hitler screaming in the bunker. That's from this movie. Um, but what the actor did was he actually listened to private conversations Hitler was having with people so he could capture exactly his mannerisms, his voice. And honestly, it's it's actually chilling watching him play him because it looks like him. But so what they're talking about here is Hitler 
was directing the 12th Army to come relieve Berlin. The 12th Army had been engaged with the Americans and other Western allies for weeks at this point and was a shell of what they were. So when Hitler said, you need to now reverse and strike hard into the Soviet Red Army and relieve Berlin, it, it was insane. It, it was an insane thing. So Venk actually said, he's like, I'm not doing this. I'm saving people over helping you. Because at this point, many of the generals did not actually like Hitler to begin with. You know, yes, they were all card-carrying members of the party, but you had to be in a dictatorship. Uh, you know, we think about the July 20th plot against Hitler with Stauffenberg and Operation Valkyrie. That was run by the military. The military did not support the Nazis the way other departments like the SS or the Luftwaffe or those places did. So, uh, Venk, was, Venk was done. He was done with the fighting. He was exhausted. His men were exhausted, and their jo they wanted their job at this point to no longer be to defend a falling regime, but defend the people. So that's another interesting part of it. Uh, what they wanted to do, the high command in Hitler, they wanted the 12th Army to link up with the 9th Army, which had been completely surrounded and were protecting a large group of civilians. Um, Venk said, I'll go to the 9th Army, but I'm not coming to Berlin. I'm not saving the government. This is over. The war is over. My job is to save these people and these soldiers and get them to the West. Like I said before, the problem was never surrendering. They were okay surrendering, but the problem was they didn't want to surrender to the Soviets because true to form, yes, the Soviets were the United States allies during the war. They were not being as kind as we were though. You know, they were, they, they, they were, they were doing some brutal things just as the Germans had done in Russia. So, it became Venk's job to not let these civilians and the 9th Army suffer to that. And that's why they keep saying the Elbe River. The Elbe River on the other side was the 102nd Division waiting. Um, there was a rule, though, that was created that the Allies all agreed on that fighting forces could only surrender to the force they were fighting. So as this goes on, I'm going to explain why that makes this very murky. Another thing uh, that Downfall really illustrates, and I'll explain what the lyrics are meaning. Uh, another great thing that Ber it, Berlin was completely a battlefield. You know, you see these civilians trying to run away, but they're watching their soldiers get gunned down in front of them. It was insanity. There came a point where Joseph Goebbels, the propaganda minister, was making Volkstrom, which is like militia. It's people force. That's what it means. They were making the Volkstrom literally charged the Russians with, sometimes with no weapons, only with Panzerschrecht. That's what these gentlemen hold, well, the boy and the gentleman are holding. So it, it's literally just a single shot bazooka that would take out tanks. So 
this was chaos. This was complete anarchy. And that's why Venk, finally, when he made that corridor and he started evacuating, when they got to the Elba, there was only a broken bridge there. So they started evacuating people across it. But as I said before, there was a rule that the Allies had established that only fight forces that were, at the time, engaged could surrender. So the Americans... They were only really taking the wounded, and they weren't taking any of the civilians, because the civilians were not combatants. But the wounded technically were, but they were wounded. So the Germans were giving them enough supplies while they were massing the 12th and 9th Army on this river, holding back the Soviets, and trying to get the civilians across. And it actually, what ended up happening was the Soviets started overshooting and killed seven Americans by accident. And... The Americans obviously were not going to fire back at the Russians because the Russians, it was an accident. But the Americans pulled back, I think, something like seven kilometers or something. So that gave the chance for these civilians to finally start evacuating across the river. And, you know, you could say maybe the Americans kind of did it on purpose so the civilians would survive because it'd be foolish to say the Americans didn't know what the Soviets were doing. But... It's an interesting, uh, interesting course of action of what happened at the Elba. That's Hearts of Iron. So, you know, it's it, it's it's crazy, this whole, you know, this Battle of Berlin, because, you know, you got to this point, you know, we saw that young girl, which, again, please, I'll actually put a link in the for the trailer. Downfall is a great movie. It's all in German, though, I will warn you. So you need to, if you don't understand German, you will need the subtitles on. But the zealotry of some of these people at the end, you know, this girl... You have Russian soldiers who have been fighting this war now for f five years almost are coming to kill you. And instead of the two of you being like, let's get out of here, you're like, I want to die for Hitler. A man who wasn't willing to die for them. And a man who was a maniac. The man, the, the man was insane. But the zealotry of some of these people that they stood by him to the bitter end is just insanity. You know, like, there's another movie about Berlin called The Bunker. It actually has Anthony Hopkins as Hitler, which, interesting choice. I think it was actually before he was in A Bridge Too Far, so he's, like, very young in it. But, um, you know, there there's a scene where the tech of The Bunker is singing The Bunker, and on the radio they say, oh, the Fuhrer died fighting in Berlin, and the guy throws a bunch of papers at it because he knows it's the lie because Hitler killed himself. But, you know, the zealotry of some of these guys, like even those execution squads, that was real. What was going on is there was these SS squads going around, rounding up people they deemed as cowards, and they were hanging them and shooting them and executing them. And if they hung you, they put a sign on you that would say, like, oh, I let German women get sexually assaulted by the Soviet bear, or I let German children get butchered, like... These really awful things that, you know, some of these people were just 
unable to fight. Like, um, one of the characters in the movie, this boy named Peter, his father is a veteran who lost his arm, and they hang him because he wasn't going to fight. So it's the zealotry at the end, but then you had people like Volter Venk who recognized what was going on. And I'm not going to sit here and say the guy was a hero. You know, all these gentlemen had a lot to answer for because Hitler would not have gone as far as he did without the military on his side for a period. And, you know, you could say what you want that, oh, well, you know, Valkyrie and all that. That was more, they were more against him because of losing the war more so than they were against what he was doing domestically and to the conquered territories. So it's very, um, you know, there's also another Sabaton song, which I might do, which is called Last Battle, which is a fascinating story in itself. But this event actually was kind of sad because what ended up happening was the Americans and Russians made a negotiations after the 12th and 9th Army and the civilians crossed the Elbe because the deal was the Russians wouldn't cross the Elbe and the Americans wouldn't cross the Elbe. They handed over like a few thousand civilians and soldiers back to the Soviets. Um, no one knows why. Uh, there's probably something out there that explains the reasoning behind doing it. Um, clearly the Russians did want revenge for what had happened in Russia. But it's, uh, it, it, it is a story of heroism because these guys could have easily... Venk was engaged with the Americans. He could have easily surrendered and just said, I'm done with the war, like many generals did do. But he recognized the threat that was going to happen to the German civilians and the Berliners. And he made it his job to make sure he did whatever he could with what little forces, and I mean, they were little, down to platoons, like the song said, to hold back the Russians long enough that they could try to escape. Now, again, yes, it's sad that a few thousand of them got handed over to the Russians anyway at the end, but that's sadly how it is sometimes in war. Alrighty, friends. So that is Hearts of Iron. Like I said, it's a little more controversial song because it paints German Third Reich soldiers in a good light. But the reality is this was very much a heroic situation. I'm not going to call the men completely heroic, due to what they did do but i will at very least admit it was a valiant attempt even though like i said some of them did get handed over to the russians anyway um that will be all for this video thank you so much for joining us i hope you enjoyed i do like doing the reactions as much as the original content and the tear makers and things like that um it's a great way to learn i love using the music videos the link for this music video for the sabatons and also the persons whose video i used will be in the uh description below i don't make money off of these i don't make anything i just enjoy teaching using the music to help teach this is an event that's very very not known and this was actually a very interesting event to happen so thank you so much for joining us if you're new to the channel please subscribe we have new content up weekly I'm starting to do a little better. I'm trying to get three up a week. I, I tried two and one, and we're progressing. So uh, we're getting very close to 500. Once we hit 500, this becomes a full-time job for me. Thank you so much for all the support. If you're returning, please like, share, and comment. And we'll see you in the next one.